Ladies and gentlemen, Montoya here from Test Squadron, the best squadron in all of Star Citizen because it is in our name. You can check that out yourself. Biggest thing to come out of Star Citizen recently is not 2.6, which is tremendous, let me tell you. It is tremendous, ask anyone. But more importantly, and especially for an organization like Test Squadron, which is the biggest in the game, where are we? 11,400 members. We want to have as many members as possible in an instant. Now, for the longest time, for the past three years at least, we've been told that an instance will have 50 to 100 people. Okay, not great, you know, we'll eat it. Star Citizen's gonna be an amazing game, we'll have to live with it. But in August of uh, 2016, this past August, Chris Roberts was being interviewed, uh, I believe it was a, a German channel, I'm gonna butcher the name, Os Furchlich's interview met, met Chris Roberts. Ah, oh, butchered that. But he had an interview and he said something which went against all the previous uh, notions we had about instancing, where he said there'll be a thousand players suddenly. So let me run this clip quickly. The sort of background we go. features like, you know, maximize earlier this morning, we were talking about some of the stuff we're doing on the network where we're going to have this sort of mesh of servers. So we'll be able to have, hopefully, you know, a large amount of players all in the same area so we don't have to instance it in the way that originally we we're thinking we we're gonna to have to instance it we have a kind of different server design now that could potentially have thousands of players all in the same <laughs> what they're gonna instance it the way we thought we we're gonna instance it now we're gonna have a server with a thousand players how the hell are you gonna do that cry engine does not have the net code how are you gonna pull us out of where not your behind is it well we got our answer in 2.6 now if you've downloaded 2.6, you will note when you start the game, this is the start screen right here, you'll notice down the bottom right hand corner, something called Lumberyard. Now, what happened? Because Star Citizen used to be on CryEngine. So what the hell is Lumberyard? Here's the funny part. As soon as I saw this, I was like, huh, interesting. I went to RSI and already there were threads about people bitching that the graphics were terrible and Lumberyard sucked. <laughs> but... Let's explain. What, let's take a close look at what's happening here. Actually, I'll show you what happened. Let me just pull out a pen because I like drawing. All right. We had CryEngine being developed here. All right. Let's, this is CryEngine. And along came Star Citizen and says, hey, we got to do a bunch of stuff. We need localized physics grids. We need all these things to make an amazing game, which CryEngine doesn't actually have natively. And so they branched off into what we've dubbed Star Engine, which is really just a branch of the original CryEngine. Now what's happened here, this is at CryEngine 3.7, and let's call this Star Engine, all right? Along comes Amazon and goes, hey, you know what, we'd like to actually do our own uh, port of this, and Amazon came along and created Lumberyard right here, and CryEngine, you know, still went off and did their thing. But what's happened now is Amazon, came along at the perfect time because Star Citizen needs to have these massive instances. For you guys who've played Planetside 2, how amazing is it when you get into a game and there's a thousand people just storming a base, fighting together, nothing comes close to that. I know, think of the opposite example, Elite Dangerous. I love Elite Dangerous, but when Wings came out in Elite Dangerous, it was really frustrating trying to go to a base and... Uh, you'd arrive at the same place with some of your friends, but your friends wouldn't be able to see you. They go, where are you? Go, I'm at the entrance. I can't see you. Why can't you see me? Because you ended up in different instances. Very frustrating. So the idea now that Lumberyard will give us the back end and the netcode to have a thousand people plus in one instance. I hope it's a thousand people. You know what? Even if it's 500 people, way better than original 50 estimate, which we start off with. So what's happened now is Lumberyard right over here has branched off and Star Citizen is now going to be using Lumberyard as you see here. No, I'm not going to draw any dicks on this page like last time. And that's essentially where we are. Uh, they branched off at 3.8. And so what Star Citizen just does is they grab the bits and pieces which they like from the code, takes them up to 3.8 right here, and we join Lumberyard right over there, and off we go. Uh, Chris Roberts actually posted something on Christmas Eve, which I will just go past you. He explains it very nicely himself. Let's drop in there. December 25th, Chris takes time off to post the following. Lumberyard and Star Engine are both forks of exactly the same build of CryEngine, where I just indicated right there. 
We stopped taking new builds from Crytek towards the end of 2015. So did Amazon. Because of this, the core of the engine that we use is the same one that Amazon uses and the switch was painless. Chris says he thinks it took them a day or two for two engineers on the team to simply do that. Really amazing. What runs Star Citizen Squadron 42 is a heavily modified version of the engine, which we've dubbed Star Engine. Just now, our foundation is Lumberyard, not Cry, Cry Engine. None of our work was thrown away or modified. We switched the like-for-like -like parts from the engine of CryEngine to Lumberyard. All of our bespoke work from 64-bit precision, new rendering and planet tech item entity, local physics grids, zone system, object containers, and so on, were unaffected and remain unique to Star Citizen. This is beautiful. Going forward, we will utilize the features of Lumberyard that make sense for Star Citizen. We made this choice as Amazon's and our focus is aligned in building massively online games that utilize the power of cloud computing to deliver richer online experience that would be impossible. Oh, I found it, an error there. He said possible. I guess impossible. With an old-fashioned single-server architecture, which is what Cry Network was. Looking at Crytek's roadmap and Amazon's, we determined that Amazon was investing in the areas that we were most interested in. Like I said, this is a godsend, just the right time because it's exactly what Star Citizen needed. They are a massive company that is making serious investments into Lumberyard and AWS to support next-generation online gaming. Crytek does not have the resources to compete with this level of investment and have never been focused on the network or online aspect of the engine in the way that Amazon are. You know, this is... Perfect time, like I said, because for Star Citizen and CIG to put in the time for the netcode to make the game as massively multiplayer as they wanted to would be a huge, huge financial and resource hog. So this is really, really perfect timing. Because of this, combined with the fact that we aren't taking new builds of CryEngine, we decided that Amazon would be the best partner going forward for the future of Star Citizen. Absolutely. Finally, there was no ulterior motive in the timing of the announcement. The deal wasn't fully finalized until the release of 2.5, and we agreed with Amazon to announce the switch and partnership upon the release of 2.6, which would be the first release on Lumberyard and AWS. If you have been checking out our schedule updates, you would know that we originally had hoped to release 2.6 the beginning of December, not the Friday 23rd. I hope this clears up some of the speculation I've seen. We are very excited to be partnered with Amazon and feel this move is a big win for Star Citizen and by extension, everyone that's backed the project. Hey, absolutely. You'd notice when you go to Star Marine and you look for, to join a match, jumps in almost instantly. Maybe I've waited 10, 15 seconds at most. Also, any kind of uh, Vandal Swarm or team or a team player like that, uh, you see, much faster now. It used to be you can... Look for a match, go make some coffee, go pee, come back. You'll still be looking for a match. It would take up to a minute, five minutes, six minutes sometimes. Now it's instant. So Lumberyard working perfectly. I hope this clears up uh, any confusion about that. If you have any questions or concerns about Lumberyard, post below. Lots of smart people will be reading this and possibly answer it for you. And be sure to check out the rest of the videos, which should be linked over there or over there. I don't know which way it is. I'll speak to you guys in a bit.